Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you some performance improvements we can make in Dash Studio 4.9 for NVIDIA iRay, for working with NVIDIA iRay. Now, these settings are under a pane. Let me let me jump right into Dash Studio 4.9 and show you where that is. It's called Draw Settings. And before we begin, uh, let me show you where to get that from. You can head over to Window, oops, Panes, and then we see Draw Settings. And that's something that you need to have open to fiddle with these settings. It comes up with a floating palette by default, but if you drag that over to somewhere else, like here, I like to have it under Tool Settings on the left-hand side, then we can see what happens here. So right now we only have a general tab, and uh, all we can do here is switch what happens when we note, highlight, manipulate, or display the wireframe. And that is because my viewport is currently set to texture shaded. As soon as I switch that over to NVIDIA iRay, we're going to get some more options. So let's try that. There we go. And while iRay is thinking about it and doing the first draw, which always takes a little bit of time, I can take you through these things here. Under General, we still have the three options that we have under the Texture Shaded Viewport. But under Drawing, we can now see if we'd like to draw the photo reel or the interactive rendered picture here. We can also blend Photoreal to render settings, or we can blend interactive to render settings. So depending on what you have your render settings set up to, this will blend the current render with the ones set in render settings. And there's another few options down here that I'm going to explain to you as soon as this draw is finished. Well, it kind of looks like it has. So right now I'm selecting Photoreal, and if I go and tumble around my character, I can see that my computer isn't that far, so I could sort of... It pixelates the image while I tumble around the character, and perhaps when I found a new position, as soon as I let go, the render starts again and shows me an iRay preview. Now notice that there's still a bit of grain in the hair and on the skin, so it doesn't immediately present me with a clear picture. And um, that is because the photo reel renderer takes a little bit longer than the interactive renderer. So if I were to switch this over from photo reel to interactive, you can see that iRay has to redraw the scene, and we can see a slightly different effect. So we still get a realistic result here, but especially on the skin, we can see that the skin tone isn't exactly like the one we uh, had before. But notice what does happen if I twist the character around now. So apart from the pixelation now, as soon as iRay starts redrawing it, we get a lot less grain in the hair and on the skin right from the start. And that is because the interactive renderer is a little bit faster than the photo real renderer, but at the expense of certain material definition. So uh, the gloss isn't done very well, glass isn't done very well. I encourage you to do a proper render in both modes and then compare what happens. If you don't have the patience to do that, you can also head over to the NVIDIA site and have a look at this image. This is a comparison between the three modes that the render engine actually has, photo real, interactive and real-time. Real-time is something that is not implemented in Dash Studio, even though the NVIDIA iRay render engine does have it. It just Dash Studio doesn't have it. So photo real we can see here, we can see the glossy reflections on the figures, and we can see a lot of definition on the background here. Whereas in the interactive renderer, we don't see that. So we don't have such glossy highlights and the background is not as defined. So this is probably done with a uh, bump map or normal map or something like that. And I suppose the photo real renderer brings that out very much, whereas the interactive renderer does not. Still, the interactive renderer is not a biased render engine as such, so it is still unbiased. It's just, you know, using different code, I guess, to, uh, to do the same thing. So whichever one you fancy, interactive or photo real, I'm going to stick with interactive here perhaps for now. Um, the other options here, uh, manipulation resolution, this one is quite interesting. If I spin the character around, you can see this pixelation going on here. And the amount or the size of those pixels can be set here. So 1 8th is the default, but I can also set this to 1 32nd, and then those, uh, those pixels will be a lot larger. So the upside of that is I can spin the scene around much quicker, but the downside, of course, is I can't really see what's going on. So perhaps a healthy medium, a sixteenth, perhaps. I'll just leave it on the default, one-eighth. 
You can also set it to normal, in which case there's no pixelation at all, but that means the character doesn't uh, doesn't even get rendered other than the gray grant type material here. And the same happens in half and quarter. I mean, my computer doesn't do it. Maybe your hardware is a little bit faster, but my computer can't can't draw this as, as pixels while I'm spinning a character. A quarter just about works. But an eighth is the one that, that kind of, you know, I kind of got used to this. Under Shadows and Lighting, you can speed up your workflow even more by heading over to the indirect light mode and changing diffuse and glossy to none. So the default is diffuse and glossy. And you can see how my computer reacts here and how fast or how slow he renders the picture. But if I switch this off, that I have neither diffuse nor glossy in indirect light, then the rendering process and the spinning round process is a little bit faster and a little bit smoother because the computer doesn't have to do that much work. I don't see much of a difference. I just see that the character looks like a little bit more washed out. But for preview purposes, I think this is all just fine. There's a bunch of other things that you can have a look at under optimization and filtering. So optimization allows you to whittle this down even more and um, play around with this and see what you find. If you want to move your characters and your scene even faster than this, you can head over to draw settings under general. You can find the manipulation tab. And the first box here is manipulation draw style. If this is set to use current, then the computer will try and draw the scene as it is with the pixels that we've that we've set previously. But if your scene is really larger, if you have a lot of characters or your computer is really slow, you can turn this into bounding boxes. And you do that by clicking on this drop down menu and either switching to wire bounding box, which doesn't really make much sense, I find. So uh, this, even though this spins the scene really fast, I really can't tell what this object is, if it's a person or the pile of rubbish, really. So the much better option would be to use the solid bounding box. Even though this is not accurate and it looks a little bit grotesque, it does allow you to gather where things are and it does allow you to position things much quicker than waiting for the render to happen. Especially useful if you have really large scenes with lots of geometry in them. My favorite way of working though is with the manipulation draw style set to current so that the pixelation happens here if I position the character, but not actually put this large viewport here into iRay mode. I like to use the auxiliary viewport, which in case it doesn't show up, you can get it under Windows, Panes, Aux viewport. And this is something we knew from the 3D Light render engine. It had a little button here that said Start Render and Stop Render. Well, that no longer exists if you switch this to iRay. and then switch it to your favorite camera, like this camera. Because this is so much smaller, it renders so much faster. And that means, as long as you're happy with the lighting and you're only worrying about scene positioning, you can switch this viewport back to texture shaded. So therefore, this stays very quick and responsive, and the small viewport kind of catches up if and when your computer is ready. Now this is great for larger scenes, and while you're positioning, characters and geometry and lights and whatnot and uh, all you can do in the small viewport is just keep an eye on what your scene looks like overall. Notice that the draw settings here they're only active depending on which viewport you're currently using. So the one with the orange outline is the one I'm using and because that's not an iRay viewport I can change these three general options around but I don't have the iRay options. However if I click into this viewport here then that becomes orange and that now has these options to change. It doesn't actually matter if you change this one from photoreal to interactive or back. As soon as you switch the IRA options on here in this viewport, the same will be applied. So here under drawing we also have interactive. So I can't say render interactive in one viewport and render photoreal in another. That doesn't work. This this all just, you know, it's it's overall for all viewports. But if one viewport is set to one option and the other is set to the other, then these options will change accordingly. Another important setting you'll find under the render settings, even though we're not really dealing with that right now, there's these three tabs at the top here, presets, 
editor and advanced. Editor is kind of the default where you change the render settings, but if we head over to advanced, it exposes the two panes down here for the photoreal devices and the interactive devices of what type of hardware you can use to render your image. So under photoreal, I've ticked CPU and my graphics card here. And for graphics cards, you need to have an NVIDIA compatible graphics card. The, um, there may be a little bit of confusion. NVIDIA is not actually the graphics card manufacturer. Somebody else will manufacture the card, like Zotac or MSI. But NVIDIA are the people who design the chipset, sort of in theory. And then the company that builds your graphics card, they license this chipset from NVIDIA, and then they put it on their graphics card, and then they sell it. That's why there's so many price differences and manufacturer differences, and it's a little bit confusing. But yeah, an NVIDIA-compatible, CUDA-compatible graphics card will show up here. Sometimes if your CPU is much slower than the graphics card, it is wise to uncheck the CPU here. But if your CPU is very fast and on par with the graphics card, then those two can help each other. And by switching both of them on, you can increase your render times a lot more. Sometimes you have a graphics card, but it doesn't show up here. And that usually means that it's not a CUDA compatible card. CUDA is the amount of processing cores that a, an NVIDIA graphics card has. So if you don't see anything besides your CPU, then you'll only have the CPU to deal with. And you can switch these settings for both photoreal and interactive renderers separately. To find out if it's wise to use your CPU, your graphics card, or both of them, I encourage you to do some test renders and see what the time of the last render was. If the render finishes and you weren't aware that it had finished and you're not quite sure how long it did take, you can head over to Help, Troubleshooting, and View Your Log File. And that gives you a very long log file. At the very end of this, you'll find, if you had done a proper render, you'll find how long the render took. In my case, I haven't done a proper render, so it doesn't actually show up a bad example. But it would show up as total render time, something like 14 minutes and 12 seconds. So you can repeat that process with the CPU ticked, just the graphics card ticked, uh, or both devices ticked. Sometimes when you're really lucky, you may have more than one graphics card, and you can see what the rendering speed is if you tick all three devices or all four devices. Now, one other interesting thing here is the Optics Prime Acceleration. This is something a little bit like compiled set of instructions. That means the code that the graphics card or the CPU needs for rendering can be transferred a little bit faster or calculated a little bit faster. So switch that on and see if it makes a difference on your system. On mine it did, and uh, this configuration on my particular system gives the best results. With Optics Prime Acceleration and the CPU and the graphics card all ticked. That was it. I hope this was helpful. In the next video, we're going to talk more about render settings and how you can get the best results out of your iRay renders in Das Studio.